Hey folks, welcome to the Cripes Cast. I'm your host, Charlie Behrens, and this is the podcast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest. We are sponsored and powered by Everlight Solar. Here is today's episode. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the Cripes Cast. Today, my guest is Wisconsin artist and muralist Zane Stats. Uh, some of you know Zane because he paints a lot of the Packers shoes. Uh, you've seen cleats that he's painted uh, on the NFL um he's made it to that level uh just by doing what he loves following his passion and sort of finding a way for business to merge with his art and he's done an incredible job it was a lot of fun talking with him and we will get to his interview in a second in the meantime joining me virtually today colleen maraca colleen uh how you doing what's it like over there in wisconsin I feel like you're joining me respectfully. I know. I see how. I had a feeling you'd figure it that way. Just yeah. something. something. Oh, hey, I'm by the way, the... you got the shoes right there in the background. Yeah, you see I know. those Can shoes you see right them? behind you? Yeah. You Do you want to bring bring them into a uh, frame just to show um, oh, folks? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, so I, I know we said we'd get to Zane in a moment, and we are. Zane came to my show um, in Green Bay and he brought these custom um, shoes, custom sneakers. There they are. Cohen's holding them up. They're super cool. Um, they're all uh, green and gold. They say, go Packers and F the Bears. My um, slogan, my sign off from the Mantuag Mint days. And then he's got uh, Baron's Old Fashioned Brandy custom made onto those. Uh, look at that. That is super cool. So anyway, we will dive into uh, Zane's business um, in in a second. But yeah, before we get there, Colleen, everything. Uh, I, I am on the road this week, folks. I'm in beautiful, sunny Columbus, Ohio. Isn't that fun? It's lovely this time of year. It's lovely this time of year. Colleen, how's, uh, how's everything at Cripes Incorporated uh, back in... Uh, Back in Wisconsin. Everything's running as usual, which means that John is on the beanbag. Um, I'm crushing uh, probably 14 to 15 bags of fruit snacks every day. Wow. And wow. Yeah. You guys are really just going all out on that Costco membership while I'm gone. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, everything's really good here. It's. Uh, Running, I mean, that's nice. It's the it's the perfect weather of like you can keep the windows open without it being like super <laughs> sticky. I thought you were gonna say it's the perfect weather where you can keep the windows open and the AC on. That's <laughs> awesome. That would have made you lose your mind. Um, I know. And I would never even though admit the that. energy's free, even though it's free because it's coming from the solar panels. There's still just something deep inside of me that says, "Why? Why are we? What's going on here?" You know, can we it's, not just yeah. be comfortable at 82 degrees? <laughs> uh, no, we can't. And it's funny because we just posted this like things dad say like that video and people were commenting. They're like, we wonder what Charlie's going to be like when he actually is a dad someday. And I was I was commenting and I was like, this is going to be me. Like I was commenting as you. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, it, yeah. It, it, sometimes I think um, my dad comes out when I'm being, um, you know, when I'm, well, it doesn't help that my brother works at the company. We're giving you really good experience and practice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all like severely younger than you and we're Stop, like, okay, pained. severely <laughs> younger. And we're much, uh, we give you a lot of hell. So that's what we're getting you ready for it. Are you a millennial or a Gen Z? I'm Gen Z. You are? What's the cutoff? I think we've talked about this. Um, I think it's, I think John is tech, er, we're kind of in the cusp. It's like, it's the 95, 96, but I'm 97. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I was actually talking with, um, who, oh, um, I was talking with, uh, Jack Henry, um, who's oh, yeah. who also works with us. And, uh, he was saying he's 27. So that's who I was talking to. Cause he was saying he's like the last millennial, you know, which Not is really like, I think, I mean, this is Okay. In this situation, I'm claiming Gen Z because you're old and I want to make you feel old. Oh, okay. So we can we can kind of like feed off the situation. Like if you if people are talking smack about Gen Z, you can be like, I'm basically a millennial. Yeah. 
Okay, got it. But then yeah. if you want to make the guy that, if you want to bite the hand that feeds you, you can just, <laughs> I see how it is, claim the Gen Z thing and say yeah. I'm super old. I mean, I, I'll like, take at, it. at end of the day, I would rather relate with millennial. Like, I don't yeah. want to be a Gen Z kid. That's not like my vibe. Okay. Yeah, you you definitely do. You're you're in the books, um, you know, and book clubs, and you got some plants, right? <laughs> what else are my hobbies, Charlie? Let's see how well you've been listening for the past four years. Well, you other do than kickball. Books. You do kickball, and you know. Anyway, I'm not gonna go farther down this. You know, I don't. <laughs> You do the it's, kickball. It's not, it's not good to blend personal and business. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be a, a good boss that respects boundaries. So, anyways, <laughs> you do anyways. kickball, and you have that reading thing that you do. <laughs> Did I mention kickball? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, no, it's life is good as good as good as gold over here. Um, oh, I was gonna tell you this. Um, I was on the phone with my grandparents the other week and, or not the other week, the other day. And the first time I got my no-no, that bottle of brandy that he loves, he was like, this is going to take a long time to get through. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to even like touch it. I was like, okay. And then I talked to him on Tuesday and he's like, Hey, can you send me like three more bottles? And I'm like, all, all right. right. Okay. Good. Hey, <laughs> so, yeah. speaking of which, we did you know, we got a, a deal going on shipping brandy mm -hmm. actually. You buy three, you get the shipping free, folks. Okay. That's the only reason I'm getting him three. I told him I'm getting him two, but I was like, at that point, you just get three and get the free shipping. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's we're doing it for Father's Day, and it's Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy. If you don't know, got a brandy now. So the dad's in your life, you know, your, your dad, your stepdad, your granddad, your sugar dad, whoever it is, just... Kelly just squinted at that last one. Uh, just send them over uh, three bottles. You get the shipping free. Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy dot com. Got to be 21 to play on that one. So there you have it. Mm -hmm. um, and that also wasn't that. That was very organic. Thanks, Kelly. And by the way, um, those bottles are on Cripe Sink. OK, so. You don't have to buy it. It was funny. It was funny. He was like, it's funny because you already ordered them. And no, 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 no. Did not I was buy them. I was on the phone with him and I was just going to buy it myself because I think we sent him the first bottle and I was like, I don't need you guys to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I can pay. And I was like, no, Charlie insists. And my I no, no, <laughs> and my no, no, and no, no was like, he was like, or I, I was saying like, no, Charlie, like we can pay for it. Like he would never let you pay for it. And he goes, he was like, what? No, no, no. And I was like, no, he insists. And he goes, what did I ever do to him? And I was like, <laughs> nothing. I was like, nothing. Just like we, like you were royalty with it. And he was like, all right, four is fine. And I was like, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. And he's like, he has the, the workers. I don't know if this is allowed, but he has the workers at his home come over for drinks. Like he lets them come and have brandy with him. Nice. So, he's, the, he's one of the cool ones. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're keeping, we're keeping no, no cool. Um, but yeah, so get the brandy, the three bottles, and you get free shipping available now for Father's Day specials. There you go. And folks, we also got a bunch of other Father's Day specials, mantwalkman.com or cripescast.com. It's the same uh, merch link. Just click on the merch section of either of those websites. You can get a bunch of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, and folks, as always, we are raising money for Doctors Without Borders. You can go to doctorswithoutborders.org, uh, help them out, or follow them at Doctors Without Borders to stay informed. All right, folks, and with that, here is my interview with artist and muralist Zane Stats. All right, well, hey, thanks for coming all the way down here. Thanks for having me, Charlie. Um, do you want an old fashioned? I'm good. I appreciate that. Okay, love. thank you. That's totally fine thank you because uh it is 11 a.m it is 11 a.m yes are you a drinker i'm not a drinker that's either. it so that, that's the hit right there yeah i Good mean for, how long have you been not a drinker um just over a year now congratulations yeah. just man kind of make a little life choice change and you, you know, know that's that's a tough thing to do and by the way if you, if you want to talk about this on the oh thing, we're fine then, no okay um well congratulations thank you just over a year just over a year so about 14 months yeah that it, it, it's not an easy thing to do in this not state. in wisconsin no this is a little bit of a drinking state but um, yeah i'm fine being different and yeah i just kind of learned that i didn't have the the right attitude to take alcohol in the right way and i drank a little too much and 
needed to make that life change and it seemed like the right time to do it and yeah i feel so much better good for you man yeah no more good waking up groggy you know yep. waking up ready to go yeah good for you well Thank very you. very very proud of you and uh that's that's not an easy thing to do but uh, um i'm glad that every single day you know you, you're doing that i got a bunch of but com- a lot of sober comedians sure are there really yeah yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it doesn't shock me. Okay. Um, yeah. So anyways, I, I get the whole deal. But anyway, thanks for coming down. Of here. course. Of course. Um, huge fan of your work. Thank you. As am I, of course. Oh, thank you. And thank you for coming. Green Bay show. You show up afterwards with a pair of the coolest sneakers I've ever received in my life. I've ever <laughs> seen in my life outside of the other sneakers you've done. But um, you got some some nikes some um incredible design on these suckers um it's just that first of all where i like to start is the baron's old-fashioned brandy and the go packers and f the bears okay but just the the custom uh paint job and everything i mean some air force ones that you just completely reimagine mm-hmm. and uh and customize yeah and you customized to me, so I was like, "Oh, that's cool." But I mean, seriously, the, you're you you're doing this for uh, professional uh, athletes. Uh, you're doing it for me. You're not just doing this. You're doing murals. Yes. You're turning um, old footballs into shoes. You're uh, reimagining those little Tykes cars. Yes. <laughs> you're doing so much stuff, um, and I guess. What I'm fascinated by is how you can make it as an artist in these unconventional ways. And really, I think any way you make it as an artist yeah. is going to be unconventional. It is. I mean, yeah, know? art isn't just black and white anymore. There's so many different facets to it. Um, but yeah, I just like to have fun with what I'm doing and try new things. So like that little Tykes car I did recently. Um, that was just it was a friend's car that wanted it for their first year old's birthday. And I just went all out and G'd it up and had a lot of fun with it. But I mean, yeah, shoes are a blast. Um, you just have that blank canvas to work with. I love working with like Nikes, the leather ones, like the ones that you had. Um, and then, yeah, making it personal to the person that's going to receive it too. So it's not just a standard pair you see on the shelves of the store, that it's it's personal to the person that gets it and really gets to, to rock it on the street and kind of show it off. Well, and your shoes have made it to the biggest stage um out there the nfl you know yes they um, have now which, which is so cool to see uh people wearing your shoes on the field um but before we get to that sure uh, i want to start off with like your story where are you from and how did you get into art to begin with yeah so i'm um, born and raised in door county up in sturgeon bay oh yeah um both my parents are small business owners so they've kind of been grinding it from the get-go uh bed and breakfast in the toy store Oh, nice. So, yeah, growing up with a parent with a toy store is, is a perk. I was going to ask which one did you like being in more, but I... I had oh, a, yeah, the toy store, yeah. for sure. I get to try out all the new things. Oh, Yeah, cool. see if they work. Cool. <laughs> Shout out the toy store. Is it still yeah, around? Yeah, it is. Uh, Dancing Bear up in Sturgeon Bay. Nice. Yeah. Dancing Bear in Sturgeon Bay. Yeah. Best toys in Sturgeon best Bay Best toys right in here. Door County. Best toys... Yeah. See, I knew it was best toys in Sturgeon but Bay. Yeah, but yeah, now it's Door County. Yeah, it's <clears> making it. For those of you that don't know where Door County is, I feel like we're uh, compelled to do a... Oh, oh I'm like, I got it the wrong yep. way. Right on the thumb. <laughs> okay, right on the thumb. Yeah, right in the thumb. Yeah, it's the, always the, the good Wisconsin thumb. hand. <coughs> Indeed. Yeah. So uh, you grew up there. Grew up there. My mom was an artist, so she, uh, she she was making jewelry. Wait, let me guess. Yes. You said one of them ran the bed and breakfast, the other ran the toy store. Yeah, which one do you think was the, the I artist? Think, I think your mom ran the bed and breakfast. You had it wrong. Dang it. I know. You had a 50-50, See, though. I, well, I, what I wanted to do was go for the not... The, like my first thought would be your mom ran the toy store, but I, 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 I know. I just thought it would be more interesting if like, actually you're wrong. <laughs> I think it's more likely she ran the toy store. Yes. She this is my way store. backtracking when I get the wrong answer. Yes. Saying I, that I know you have a way of doing it. That's good. I, I was too smart to get the answer right. <laughs> of course you were. Of course you were. <laughs> no. Yeah. She ran the toy store. She was an artist. She did tapestry. She did jewelry. Um, so she kind of had always had that art side to her. Um, my dad was an engineer, so he was the more analytical side. He's the one that had the bed and breakfast, uh, white lace up in Surgeon Bay. Um, but yeah, so I always kind of liked doing art from, 
from the beginning. Um, in high school, my dad gave me the permission that I could start spray painting a garage when my mom was out of town for a week, <laughs> which she absolutely loved. That's cool. <laughs> so I went to town on it, just to spray paint, just different kind of characters. Wait, did she actually love it? No, she hated it. Oh, I would think because she was the <laughs> artist that she would think, oh, this is, I see what you did here. No, so the reason that she hated it is that our house was in the backyard of the bed and breakfast. So it was transforming the bed and breakfast too, which she had a big stake into the bed and breakfast too, even though she had the toy store. Yeah. But I mean, she didn't really see it as... um an attractive element to the Victorian style <laughs> of the bed and breakfast <laughs> with this urban graffiti. I see. I mean, there I was see. kind of a night and day turn right there. But And um, why was your dad for it? I just think he wanted to encourage me to just try something new. And I don't think he knew what I would do. Yeah. So when I was given the permission to do one thing, of course, I took it to level 10 <laughs> yeah. and just went not just from the first five feet, but got ladders and got to the very yeah. top of it and <laughs> filled the whole thing up. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so it really started there. I mean, that was, I guess, my first kind of mural um, high school. Um, went to college at St. Norbert College in De Pere. Yeah. Um, was kind of trying to find my footing of what I wanted to pursue as a career. Um, played around with a few different things, exploring maybe biology, not into medical stuff, no thank you. Political science, another thing, just kind of boring for me. But finally found my footing on a mixture of business and art. Um, so I ended up graduating with graphic design and business mm -hmm. um, from the school. And the professors, and especially in the art department, really encouraged me to explore different mediums of my art. Um, so not just your traditional painting, not just traditional digital stuff, but like exploring it into different canvases, larger um, wood sculptures, wood canvases, um, using kind of books as different mediums, um, as props that you could use to paint. Um, so just kind of opened my eyes um, which then I, I took that, um, um, that education into a graphic design job early on at a agency in green Bay. Got it. Got so, it. so it is almost step one in, in your sort of, in your sort of artistic journey is like get a job somewhat in art. Yes. Because that, uh, like, was that intentional for you? It was, I mean, I wanted a job, um, I think also because when I when I chose to do art as a career, both my parents were like, you know, that's risky. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to get a job and be successful and kind of make a living off of doing art. So especially when they kind of gave me that advice, I, of course, wanted to prove them wrong, mm -hmm. which is kind of one of the reasons like I want to show that I can I can do this, not just at a level of sustaining and living at an adequate level, but like do it and push it to whatever medium is possible. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to get that first job out of college, work at an entry level graphic design firm, making less than minimum wage, cranking out, um, designs for local businesses, which it was fun. I mean, I learned that real world skill of kind of designing and advertising and, um, kind of how you can take just art and make it, I guess, more kind of corporate and business-like, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it was a great place to start out to kind of work, um. But while doing that is kind of when I started developing the freelance side of things, the things that there's not boxes or limitations I have to stay in to work with. So that's when I started doing murals, started doing freelance projects at the nights. Um, and it, it really all started with the Packers fence right outside Lambeau Field. So this is the one of the most iconic things that you see when you go to Lambeau yes. from the fans perspective. And also it's been on Monday Night Football, too. Right? It's been on Monday Night Football. It's been on NBC Thursday night. Um, it's been on ESPN segments. It's yeah, it's it's made a lot of different cuts throughout the year. I mean, that's going to be that's Growing up a Packers fan, yeah. as you did. Oh, for sure. To to now, like, look at something that you've made become, like, part of the iconicness of Lambeau Field and, and the culture of it. That's yeah. got to that's gotta feel amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Um, Just driving down that area and just knowing that I, I've kind of helped create something that kind of um, attributes to, to Lambeau Field and the fans see every day um, when they're visiting the stadium, game days. Um it's a fun canvas to, to work on. I mean, it's 70 feet long, six feet tall. Um, just that whole block has just transformed so much over the years too, that it's, it has. it's really just come to like a, a fan hangout 365 all, all year long. Um, now for those who uh, don't know anything about Lambeau field or green Bay, 
uh, help describe what your mural is that, that you created there. Yeah, so it's every year I create a mural on that street. Um, it's always the Saturday before the first home game. Um, typically, it's painted in one day. So starting around 6 in the morning, finishing up probably 8, 9 at night. Um, and it changes theme every year. Um, usually, it's tied around the team, something that team messaging or where we think the team is going. Um, sometimes it's tied around the community, um, like around COVID-19. Um, the whole year when really fans weren't allowed into the stadium, um, transform the fence into a fan fence where fans would pay a portion to get their likeness put on the fence. And then those funds would be do donated back to a local um, charity that was benefiting families in need with COVID-19. Super cool. Um, so, I mean, like that year alone, we got 69 fans on the fence, um, different likenesses. So. Yes, I chose the number. You for couldn't go for 70. No, pants. couldn't go 70. Just 69. Just couldn't fit another <laughs> fan in there. Not an inch around. I know it was tough. <laughs> uh, I can't help myself. You know? Grow up. You don't grow up. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Ignore that? That's no, no, what no, everyone no. I was listening was thinking. Yeah, easily could go to 70. No, sorry. Just uh, got to end somewhere. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> but that's very cool. Um, so have you done. You haven't done this year's yet. No, have not done this year's. When does um, that happen? So that will happen. I know this the schedule just got released. So I think it's uh, the 14th, 13th of September. Um, so I think our home opener is uh, 14th or 15th. I'll have to look that up exactly. Yeah, because we're doing Brazil week one. We're doing Brazil week one. You yeah. going down to Brazil? I'm, I'm thinking about it. No. Flights aren't bad. It's the, the ticket price that gets a little hefty. Ticket price is a bit of a lift. Um, I don't know... Uh, I don't know what's going on down in Brazil politically this time of year, but yeah. you know, it's not the safest area in the world, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, a I mean, fun it's place. an experience. It's an experience. I have family yeah. from Brazil um, that actually cool. grew up in Sao Paulo. Oh, so you, you so know the lay of the land. I know the lay of the land. I know what areas I should visit at night and mm -hmm. what areas I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's, uh, um, I'm thinking of, uh, since the flights are pretty cheap, I was thinking of doing a, a show down there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not concerned about uh, my safety, really. Uh, but what I would be concerned in doing a show down there is, like, would other people be concerned about their safety? Because sure. would other people be... Because if I'm just doing a show for me and five of my closest friends, that's always tough for comedy. You know? That is. But that is always tough. Anyway, well, but that'd uh, be cool. Yeah, a show down there would be great. Hey, you'll be there. I will be there. How much family do you have? Um, I mean, it's my aunt. Her family's down there. So they've, they've got a good five, six, seven people I can get to the show. You know what? If I can get like 25 people there, I might just do it. I can get you to double digits. I mean, I can't promise 25, but I can get you to that 10 mark. I Just give me a bad open, night, my, uh, open mic night and yeah. so I can write off the entire Brazil trip on my taxes. Oh, beautiful. We're good. I just need enough people so I can write off the sure. And um, and I also have to go to the game so I know what I'm telling jokes about. You do. You so do. I got to write off that, that as well. It's very important to write that off. I really shouldn't telegraph all of this to the IRS, should I? You know, is, this is just theoretical. It, it is. Yeah. Hypothetically, this could happen, but no. Also, in order to get into the team spirit, you need to have a couple beers beforehand. Right. You do. Like for all business purposes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So those need to be written That's off. That's another they write do. off. Yeah. Yeah. And you I, definitely have to bring your bourbon down there too. Or not yeah. your brandy. I'm sorry. Not That's, bourbon. that's Oof. A, I mean. Oof. Good God. I know. I'm going to get thrown off this pretty quick. Yeah. But you know brandy, what? Yes. I love your watercolors. Thank uh, you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's all finger paint. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watercolors, though, there are some artists that really dive down into watercolors. Yeah, there actually are. Very famous there ones. Are. Famously. Yes. I remember when we were growing up, uh, kids um, in uh, Catholic school. Uh -huh. You know, I remember we had gym assembly where we all had to sit cross-legged, yep. and we watched this woman come in, and she would do PowerPoint presentations before PowerPoint was a thing. It was slides on the overhead projector. Sure. Yep. And she'd bring up these old art paintings, and yeah. she would talk about them. Do you remember this? I woman? do remember this. Yes. Yeah, and it was cool. That's where I saw my first set of boobs. I bet because they were painted ones. Yeah, the watercolor you know. boobs. Yes. Yeah, the water water boobs. Water yes, Colleen. <laughs> Let's move on. Are you disapproving? No, I mostly was laughing at you guys. We're starting to beef with each other, and then you both immediately go. But there's really good art. Like the most Midwest <laughs> way of getting out of beef. Yeah. Like, but there are really good. 
like watercolor people. Like you guys. Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are. Super Midwest. The one about the boobs. Well, <laughs> no, but I mean, Kelly, did you have this when you were in grade school up in Minnesota? Like a woman comes in or how old are you? 32. You're 32? Okay, yeah. I'm 37. So like we're close enough. We're right? like 10 years older than Kelly. You yeah. are, yeah. Could be I your am. grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> He's five. So <laughs> don't date Shut him. <laughs> just uh, grouping me d- in. Did you go to Catholic school too? I did go to Catholic school. I think yes. it's a Catholic thing. Is it Catholic? I didn't. That's we weird. Didn't have that in school. That's, that's weird that that's how all these Catholic kids are seeing boobs, you know, like it's, in the in the drawings and stuff in the art. Weird. And yeah. all, everybody in the audience, everybody just starts whispering. And then she's saying, you know, she's talking about it might also just be a Wisconsin thing, because I it think it could be. I think this was one, it a Wisconsin artist. No, but she was like an art gal yeah oh. i gotta find her i gotta bring her on <laughs> but i do remember that yes i'm like what, what's it like showing like a bunch of eight-year-olds their first pair of boobs yes and she'd be like you clearly weren't listening to what i was saying back then <laughs> this is <laughs> this is not this the is the renaissance <laughs> period of all right anyway so she would just come in and ask or show you guys paintings yeah and it wasn't kind of just art it wasn't yeah. just it yeah. was eras <laughs> You would do Renaissance. Of smut. <laughs> 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 this is smut the, through the ages. <laughs> the 1950s bathroom stall era. Yes. And then the next day with health class. I mean, it's the introductory to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It was really dovetailing. It was the in there. Yeah, they really got it all in there. <laughs> here's here's what uh, here's another. Actually, now that we're bringing it up, why do like in these classy like sort of like Italian restaurant type things or like. Uh, whatever you know a place you go to where it's sort of like upscale chic kind of uh-huh. you above the stall in the men's bathroom there's just naked like burlesque you know pictures do you know why that's the thing i don't know why that's a thing but maybe it just encourages men to go to the bathroom is that it what i don't know are men but not it, going to the bathroom i don't know uh, maybe is that a thing uh, yeah probably okay so is this, it in the women's bathroom is it in the women's bathroom yeah do you have, what restaurant are you referring to? An, an upscale Italian line. It's yeah, word. yeah. Like, um, it, okay. The, the is, fact okay. that all guys know what I'm talking about right now. The thing is, you guys face the wall. That's true. We we don't. Well, you face a wall. I face the stall of the bathroom. And are they decorating right? the stall? No. Okay. So I think it's probably something to keep your guys' attention <laughs> <laughs> while you're peeing. So Do we're not. A- we're sorry. Our attention doesn't drift. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> It's upholding Christian values. <laughs> 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 so like if they don't have money for the divider, they just put yeah. the picture up there just to keep your eyes locked the entire time. Uh, <laughs> now we know. Now we There's know. There's one bathroom. Um, I think it's uh, what bar is it? Elwoods, maybe. There's one bathroom in Milwaukee at a bar that like has a bunch of naked guys. Oh. And I'm literally like <laughs> I am a Christian. I am a Christian. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. <laughs> Shoot, that was good physical comedy. That was good physical. <laughs> yeah. now, now I think we got to get a GoPro on you. No, we don't. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's the only thing I can think of. I don't, I've never seen the naked people yeah. like you guys have. It's like the, I, what percentage of guys' bathrooms would you say that sort of stuff is in? I um, would, too many. Yeah. I, I would probably say like um, maybe 15%. Yeah. 15%. I oh, I was yeah. thinking it was more. No. Um, no, most bathrooms don't have it. But I'm saying if a bathroom has photos in it or um, not photos, art. Like art, it's usually like... I was just saying one yesterday where a gal from the 20s was holding one deal like this and the other deal. was fully out there, you know? Huh. Yeah. And deal? all I could think about, all I could think about D, was my deal. grade school art class. So I started laughing. <laughs> Anyways. That's the sketch that we've been talking about. Girls bathrooms versus guy bathrooms. Yeah. Girls bathrooms are the stalls where it's like like girls will take sharpies and write on the stalls words of empowerment and you guys are looking at <laughs> boobs <laughs> <laughs> or it's just it's all like it's um f you or like i i see it it's not that big kind of a thing oh like, yes there's always that and um every yeah. swear word you can think of and yes yeah i mean inventive inventive swear words. which i give some people credit for yeah for sure yeah snarky comments circling something 
pointing an arrow up and saying your mom. Yep. You know, the a you lot of, are mom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's like you're pregnant. Like you are mom. <laughs> 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 this is your birth announcement. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we got way off wow. track on that. So we're, because I offended your uh, your brain. Yeah, that was that's I'm where sorry. it came from. You yeah. can't <laughs> you can't do that to a fell with ADD. I'll no. go I'll go way off the rails. I hear you. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to your job and yes. how how yes. you how you see so you, you you're working at working nine to five, working for the man, working yes. corporate America. Yes. Um, and then what's your first sort of like? Uh, were you, were you always working on the side, your side hustle that whole time, or I was. did you fully? And actually, even till now, I'm still working full time and doing this on the side. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I just don't sleep anymore, which is okay. Well, <laughs> that, I mean that. So, like, this is a big reason I wanted to have you on is because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who I've encountered personally mm -hmm. that they they tell me um, at meet and greets or whatever, just at the bar that they want to do this. They've always thought about doing that. Um, and these are all like either comedy or it is art or sure. it's photography or it's videography or whatever, but they never, um, you know, could do it. So I think it, showing a pathway of like how you're doing it is cool for them to see. So yeah. You um, basically f nine to five. You're doing your normal gig. Well, what are you calling sick today? What the hell happened? <laughs> I'm in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so, so good. All right. Well, you so see, you're in a meeting now. So um, it, you're you're still doing that, and then uh, just at night, that's when you go to town on these other. That's things. when I go to town on weekends. Um, yeah, it's just I think. In this industry, like a lot of others, it's about connections who you can talk to to get certain gigs. Mm -hmm. um, like the Packers fence opened up a lot of doors to other things, just getting your art into public space. Yeah. Um, but it still took a lot of cold calling, um, talking to someone who knows someone who knows someone that might be looking for a mural somewhere. Um, so I think the, the first thing I really started building was just my mural business, my mural side of things. Um, and just started doing little projects, you know, all over the state a little bit. Um, kind of slowly branched out to to other states now too, um, but yeah, just kind of gets just keep driving, driving as as hard as I can to find that next project. Um, I mean, now I'm working with different city municipalities on like beautification budgets they're getting from the grant, um, not from the grant from the government. Mm -hmm. um, um, so grants that they're receiving. Um, to kind of help beautify their cities. Like Fond du Lac is one I'm working with right now. Fondy. Yeah, good old Fondy. No kidding. I know. So I've um You know I got some Fond du Lac uh roots in the family. You do have some Fond du Lac. I was just roots. there yesterday. Oh really? Grandma Sue lives there. Oh, good old Grandma Sue. Yeah, they lived there their whole life. My grandma Sue, Grandpa Bob, Grandpa Bob gone, obviously. Oh, that's but cool. um yeah, uh and so where are you gonna what are you thinking of doing over there? So Can you I've, say it? Yeah, so I've done two Three murals that are already. Which one? Um, so in Franklin Park, I've got a large colorful mural that wraps around a bar. Um, it kind of deviates, I guess, the the park where all the kids play to the bar on the corner. Yeah. So now there's <laughs> it kind of breaks them apart so that they know they shouldn't cross it until they turn 21. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's this big colorful wall. It's probably 100 feet long, 150 feet long, kind of wraps around a, an L-shaped corner. Um, and then the basketball court too. I did all the basketball poles, the hoops, the backboards. Um, and then I just went over to Hamilton park mm -hmm. and they installed a new, um, it's like a musical playground where there's a bunch of like outdoor musical instruments that kids can go play on. Mm -hmm. And then I did the whole concrete slab underneath that. Oh, nice. Um, and then now I'm doing two murals on the side of the restroom that's going in there. Very cool. Very cool. Now, is this... No naked ladies are going to be painted. <laughs> no, on the mural no in the they didn't have the budget for that. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, excuse the interruption, but I got to tell you, we are powered and presented by Everlight Solar. Now is the time to get your free consultation with Everlight Solar to see how solar panels and solar energy can work for you. If you're a longtime Cast listener or new, now you know the Cast studio is powered by Solar Power Energy. It's great and green, and it's awesome. Check it out, everlightsolar.com, for a free consultation to figure out if solar panels are good for you. And by the way, Fleet Farm, I tell you what, that is your place to find everyday deals on everything you need for everyday life. You need to restock you know, your food and treats. 
you know, for your your humans or your four legged friends. They've got great food for everyone. Dogs, cats, birds, chickens, horses, you, you name it. They've got it. You can get your auto fluid filled to water softener, household essentials like laundry detergent, bathroom paper products, whatever. Find everything you need for your everyday life over at the Fleet Farm. We love it. And folks, if you are still looking for that perfect gift for Father's Day, head on over to mantwogman.com or cripescast.com. Click on the merch section. You can find all these great gifts for your dads. And uh, if you order right now, it may not come in time for Father's Day. But, you know, if you're seeing dad uh, about a week later or something, perfect thing for that. Or you can do, you know, what I usually do is like get a card and say, this is what I got you because I'm always a last minute guy Mm -hmm. and uh you know you just write it right there on the card what's coming to them in the mail we got sweatshirts hats koozies games cards lures and more uh it's your perfect midwest general store if you don't think about it too hard check out mantwogman.com click on the merch section or if you're interested in our bonus content colleen what can they do if they're interested in our bonus content Uh, If you're new to the show, we've got a Patreon. So basically, if you are a super fan or you just want to see what's going on in the daily life of Cripes or you want to see extended intros or behind the scenes on the road, go to patreon.com slash Charlie Barron's for bonus content. Um, I think this week we're putting up stuff with Ed the Diver from your your diving trip that you did a couple weeks ago. Um, The week before was a tour of Charlie's Garage. It's all really important (laughs) and really good content. And um, yeah, and then there's a lot of... Uh, We'll give early release dates and um, codes for tour dates because Charlie's going out on the road in the fall. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Charlie Barons. Thank you, Colleen. And with that, ladies and gents, we are back to my conversation with Zane Stats. Is this the kind of thing that people are now calling you for or that you are still cold calling to get? It's a 50-50 thing. Yeah. This, um, they found me, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I Probably through social media, I'm guessing. But a lot of the time still, I'm, I'm looking at you know, who is receiving these funds too, especially mm. um, there are a lot of these kind of beautification grants going out, not just in the state, but kind of around the country. Um, so looking at who's receiving the funds and then finding who the right person to contact is um, and seeing if there's a way that I can kind of lend my skill to kind of help their end goal. Um, so like, for instance, the city of Greensburg, Indiana, where I was about a week and a half ago, a week ago, um, I just did a large mural down there. It's uh, 27 sheets of plywood that I faceted onto a building Mm -hmm. because they wanted to be removable in case they ever wanted to put somewhere else. Yeah. Um, But that was funded by the city. Um, They're getting a lot of government grant money right now just to kind of help beautify their city. Um, They're the middle point between Indianapolis and Cincinnati, exactly an hour to both. So it's kind of like a destination that people stop um, going from one city to the other. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I'm I'm trying to find those kind of projects, too, that... Um, obviously they have the funds to help kind of create a large scale mural because there's a lot of time and money involved. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely still cold calling and, and finding who the right people, um, or groups are to work with for certain projects. Yeah. I mean, I think the cool thing about being an artist is if you take that same artistic mindset, that same creative mindset Mm -hmm. and sort of, um, Uh, scrappy but i don't mean scrappy in a bad way i mean scrappy in the sense that you also take old footballs and make them into shoes yes you use that same thing in the business side where you're looking for where these grants are going and then you're calling up and i think that's a it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to take their artistic mind and apply it to their business mind and allow the two to flourish so it's cool you're doing that i think it's it's especially as an artist you still need that business side which i think is helpful why i did that in college too i kind of went for the business and the art so yeah. i kind of understood both sides um not you listened to your dad i did listen to my dad somewhat but then still went off the rails a little bit my dad said if you're gonna go to school you get a business degree do not just get a journalism degree do not just do not just get a journal and i got a journalism degree and a geography degree okay environmental geography okay which have you used uh yeah i have okay good but I would have used a business degree a lot more. I'm just going to say that. But uh, so my dad was right in retrospect. But um, I hope he doesn't listen to this podcast. I know I said that. Uh, 
Don't worry, I don't think she does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, what about making the shoes for the pa- How many Packers have you made shoes for? So I've made cleats now for eight different Packers, uh, nine different Packers now. Um, can you name them all? Or can, have you done it for so many that um, you I can't can probably even... name most of them now. So Kenny Clark is where it all started. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how did that go? The because. Very unique thing uh, out of the box deal uh, saying, hey, uh, I'm going to make you these cleats. Where where'd that idea come from? And then I want to hear all the Packers. Sure. So it's it started because um, I started talking on social with Kenny Clark. Um, you slid into Kenny just Clark's slid DMs. into his DMs, you know, a little cold DM. Nice, dude. Um, he wanted a painting done in his house of kind of a portrait of him, um, of his kind of college and where he is now professionally. So kind of incorporating uh, UCLA with Packers. Dope. Um, so it was a large four foot by eight foot painting that he wanted in his living room. Um, so how did you know that he wanted that? Well, I, I was kind of saying like, this is what I specialize in. This is what oh, I can do. Got it. Um, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for like some kind of like a painting of some kind. And then I kind of like brainstormed some ideas um, and then kind of found like this. This is what would work in the setting that he's looking to have it in, which is this beautiful living room he has at his house in Green Bay. Um, so yeah, I, I c- kind of created that painting. Um, obviously from there, he was able to see kind of what I was able to do and mm-hmm. he kind of just asked, you know, I'm looking to get some custom cleats. Is that kind of in your wheelhouse? And I said, you know, let's, let's give it a try. I think I can do this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I started with one pair, two pair. Um, and then it just kind of went from referral wildfire from there. Um, so, I mean, I got then to like Sean Clifford, um, backup QB, um, who then referred Jaden Reed um who then from there referred who'd be next probably savage and then jair alexander um tj slayton romeo dobbs Mm -hmm. um and then yeah from there it's just kind of keep going from word of mouth yeah Um, with each pair of cleats that i i make i put the player's name on it but i also put my name logo on it Mm -hmm. and this nice shoe bag oh shit (laughs) Right there, right there. Yes, yeah, so the good old Zane. Keep it simple, four letters. It's pretty cool. So with that shoe bag too, now I'm kind of getting my name in the locker room. So it's just yeah. it's consistent branding too that I can kind of help um, just grow and, and do more cleats because there are a few shoe artists around this area that are doing some custom cleats, custom kicks. But mm-hmm. um, it's, I mean, we're, we're all trying to do as much as we can. And it's um, it's a unique form of art because it's, it's not just painting a canvas. I mean, yes, you're taking a shoe, but in order to paint it, you got to remove all the factory finishes and all the other stuff off the shoe to even make the paint stick. Yeah. Um, Cause there's a lot of that, the chemicals and different finishes that are on that leather that they put it on there to make um, like dirt and any kind of stains come off easily. Mm-hmm. So obviously you have to, you have to remove all those layers before you can paint. Sandpaper. Um, Sandpaper and acetone. Oh, I was kidding about the sandpaper. No, it's actually a lot of sandpaper and a lot of acetone. Oh, wow. um, acetone, is that bad for you? Uh, I mean, I'm still living. Do you wear a mask? Uh, no. Oh, boy. I, I know. know. You better wear a I mask. I know. I might need to, but I, it's usually ventilated. I do a lot of, uh, not a lot. I, I, As a kid, I did more, but I started to get back into doing like some woodworking stuff. Okay. I'm a, I'm a big mask guy. It's yeah. the most annoying thing to wear um and uh but i'm uh, i'm just paranoid i'm like whatever i'm doing i'm inhaling some something you know here. it's not a bad idea yeah. charlie's also just like the most averse to like nail polish smell and acetone like i is that what's in nail polish yeah, yeah, yeah i thought you were gonna say that you got back into painting your nails or something oh but, i'm okay. that went over my head i walked in the okay so when i was a kid we would go on <laughs> like one or twelve uh, uh and we would go on these vacations uh-huh. and all the friggin' kids are in the car one of my sisters starts painting her nails i'm like are you are you kidding me right now <laughs> hot ass day the smell is just per, like fist fights oh yeah over that whole thing yes with my sisters no i'm kidding we're in duluth and i had done it earlier the green room is like the, probably the size of this room. sure and i had just done it like maybe 10 minutes ago he walks in immediately is like what like tweaking out what is the smell of this what's going on is there a oh gas leak da, 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 da. you would have thought like i, I had gone to your gives, head it gives me such a headache you know what here's why it gives me a headache because my sisters would do it on car rides uh-huh. probably well, put it in front of the air conditioning to cool off i don't know, know oh, it, yeah that, right? that assumes our air conditioning was working yeah um, <laughs> but 
I don't. Anyway, I it would give me a headache. Yeah, for what, sure. Does it give you a headache, or does um, it just give me a headache? Did it give you. It a headache? doesn't give me a headache, but I usually do have like fans and open windows. Like okay. I'm not just like in a little dark hut pouring acetone on leather. <laughs> yeah, because um, <laughs> it might be it might be fine for you. I don't know. I'm not. I, I mean, it I dissipates just, pretty fast. Too. I just know it from being a kid of like uh, just uh, anyway. Uh, po- you know, whatever. Maybe I'm overreacting. Yeah. Am I? <laughs> no. I, like I wasn't mean to, to you, that. Colleen. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> what does I mean? What did I say? If I was mean, I'll make amends right no, now. No, we're fine. We're fine. Now, nah, can you tell the way she said <laughs> yeah, that? That was yeah. the most Midwest, we're, we're fine. fine. <laughs> I can't remember what you said, but Dante even was like, whoo. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, you were like, what? is that smell it smells awful and i was like my nails and you're like seriously like you got so i was i was heightening it for comedic effect yes in my mind (laughs) but i do that a lot and then i listen back like sometimes i do that on this podcast where i heighten my like comedic anger i think sure then i'm listening back i'm like why didn't you guys tell me I sound like such a jackass? You it's know? funny, but it's also sometimes it's rooted in truth. <laughs> oh, it's always rooted in truth. Yeah. I'm telling you where the truth is rooted, that my sister's dad drove me nuts. Yeah. So, but anyways, if my <laughs> sisters were there, they'd be laughing at that. <laughs> we were laughing, and then I think that's what made you mad. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why. Because yeah, yeah. my sisters would be laughing, too. Anyway, anyway, back to the shoes. Sorry. Yeah, back to the shoes. So, all yes. right. Yeah, you're doing that. So, yeah, I mean, it's been a d- bunch of different um, cleats now, and I, I kind of keep getting more and more connections. Um, I'm now working with the sports marketing agent, Mark Mayfield, who's really helping open a lot more doors to a lot more players. Um, so with that, I'm, I'm looking forward. I mean, I already did Romeo Dobbs, my cause, my cleats, cleats for next season. Nice. Um, I just did those about a week and a half ago. Um, so that's that's week 13, week 14 of every NFL year is my cause, my cleats, yeah. where players can wear custom cleats to support any foundation and there's mm-hmm. no color restrictions on their cleats mm-hmm. whereas every other season during the year it has to be part of their team's colors so mm-hmm. packers can be white black green yellow and in some instances some gray but mm-hmm. other than that if they do end up wearing colors outside that it's thousands and thousands of dollars in fines um which i don't really want to help pay if I have to. And if the player wants something done and they're willing to take the fine for it, I'm all for it. I, I was like, that's yeah. when you've won right there. Oh yeah. Which Odell Beckham has done that a few times. Has he? Yes. How much has he paid to wear cleats that are off color? Um, I think it's at least $10,000 a game. Good God. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money, man. Yeah. Um, well this is super, um, it's super cool. So you start off with uh just one it sort of snowballs into more and are you uh are you still sliding into are you is are you on a consistent slide into dm you know i'm a good slider yeah are people are sliding to me too now which is wow that sounds Ooh. weird but <laughs> what's what's a good slide tactic you know for other artists out there for your competition out there looking yeah. to beat you to the punch <laughs> I mean, I always slide with a compliment first. I mean, compliment the person and then yeah. kind of just subtly, you know, this is what I can do. If I can ever do something to help, let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a lot of Packer players, but I mean, I just created a a custom jacket for a Playboy Playmate. Oh, really? So that was... Mm, how'd I you slide into those DMs? <laughs> compliment other, first? Other way around, actually. Really? I know. Packer fan. Packer fan. Yes. Nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. You married? I am. Ah, no. <laughs> Did your wife know? <laughs> yeah, she does. No, okay. <laughs> Healthy marriage. Good what for you. What you think about who she, um, like who her fans are, it's my perfect demographic of who I'm creating art for. Because, I mean, her fans are, I mean, it's middle-aged men for the most oh, part, yeah, sports yeah. fans. I mean, yeah. so it's the same target demographic I am for for other art projects, especially with custom cleats, custom apparel. Yeah. Um, I just created some shoes for Young Gravy. Did you? I did. Um, some Minnesota Timberwolf kicks that who he, slid um his manager slid into mine wow yeah look at that young gravy's manager yes sliding in your dms so yeah are almost, you gonna meet young gravy um there's no plan yet he's out in la yeah so maybe on a tour or something we'll see okay cool but, man yeah so who, who else is sliding give us some more names oh, some more names that are sliding yeah i mean you already are doing great by the way playboy playmate uh young gravy's manager 
pretty i mean that's yeah, a good it's, it's pretty good yeah. yeah a lot of players um i mean there's a few other things in the works right now that we're trying to finalize but um you know for the main ones right now though i say those are probably the pinnacles the, the apexes okay um now are these custom jobs um kind of the thing where uh you know like can you give us a sense of like how much a custom pair of shoes is or is that a rude question to ask or does it depend on like the shoe it depends on a lot of things it depends yeah. first on the shoe um i try to only work on real leather um mm -hmm. synthetic leathers get to be a pain in the ass because all the the different chemicals they put on the synthetic leather just paint never wants to stick well to it mm -hmm. um so i always try to stay with like a real leather or like a, a canvas like a converse mm -hmm. um both of those paint sticks well but um so yeah it definitely starts with the shoe um and then the design i mean if it's something simplistic um we're talking a couple hundred dollars if it's something more um detailed it's going to go up from there mm -hmm. um but i would say they, they range anywhere from probably three hundred dollars um not including the cost of the shoe up to seven eight to a thousand depending on the the detail and complexity of it very cool um but yeah because e each pair is different yeah. um and i um i like to make each one different too just because i don't want the same pair of shoes being worn by multiple different people I'll just like i make a bunch of custom apparel i want each one to be a one of one just something unique that that one person can wear um maybe there's something similar somewhere else that someone's done or not done but someone's wearing that i've created but just nothing the exact same mm -hmm. that that's uh that's i think cool from an artistic perspective that that you have that and and the, want that to be your thing and then just cool from someone who has it knows that like yeah this isn't this can get out there past this you know? yeah um and it, then over time i would imagine like you know your art starts to become collectible and that's kind of like the next the next iteration of all of it for sure yeah and i mean even with like a lot of the shoes i'm creating right now um people aren't even wearing them they're just putting them like on their mantle like especially different like packer ones um which i always encourage like if i'm making custom shoes like you gotta wear them you gotta flaunt them you gotta like rock them out on the streets but um it's it's a lot of people when they get like a custom shoe painted they they see it more as like a sculpture you you put up instead of like wearing it like you're supposed to yeah which i mean i, I love seeing my work yeah displayed but like being worn in the actual element i'm so um, i'm so don't glad ever you said say this. that literally we will not let charlie wear them <laughs> what is what is that what you're gonna say i that's where i was going with it because they were like because they were like um yeah well the night i left the rest center after you gave it to me yeah. it was pouring okay so i didn't which I, they're waterproof not just water sealed but the the holes are all plugged up so you could go jumping in puddles and your socks would be dry to the bone. See how my shoes are black right now? I do. The reason that my shoes are black is because I, I would never wear white shoes. Okay. Like wearing this this white um, flannel, half, half white flannel. Sure. It's a big move for me. Okay. Because um, I, I spill things. You are that guy. I am He's that guy. Toddler. So And these look so cool. So I'm going to, I do plan, despite what they said, to wear these on game days. Good. Good. you know um but wearing them around like i'm in the i'm in my garage a lot you know i'm sweeping stuff up sure you know so i'm dropping things I you know that. yeah and, and so i just don't want to ruin them but they, there's also like that like story that you guys told on your family podcast of like how your feet were smelling and your aunt threw out your shoes yeah <laughs> we're but trying I, to I fix preserve. that i fix that i fixed my feet on that so i started i started um <laughs> I, I don't want to say what I started yeah, let's doing. Yeah, not. People be like, you weren't doing that before. Um, Were you not washing your feet? Don't, don't talk to me, Kelly. You weren't washing your feet? I was. Well, do you, do you wash your feet in the shower? Absolutely. Yeah. Where else do you wash them? Well, you, you get, you they think get that showered the soap, on. No. The soap makes its way oh, down there. I did used to think that. that that's, you know... That's definitely You're canceled. Definitely, That's disgusting. It's definitely a white guy thing. Not washing the legs. For sure. Yeah. But I know now. I know now. Yeah, and I've, I've known for quite some time. Okay. But I did not know when I was seven years old. So don't, don't give me that look, that Colleen. Okay. Yeah. Don't give me don't give me that. <laughs> that K is as bad as your fine. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen is the king of uh No, the one last one that made you mad was cool. 
Like we, cool. we're coming up with an idea. I go, cool. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's like, that's like the, uh, where, where you shoot a basketball and you like just walk away, yeah. you know, you're like that. I'm just gonna, yeah. Or no, that wouldn't be the basket. It would be the basketball equivalent would be like stuffing it at the, uh, hoop. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. Yes. If you, is there one, like being a Packers fan, is there one sports franchise or like, are there any like things that you will not do custom work for? Like, would you never do a bears shoe? Would you never do a Cubs shoe? Mm. You know, Colleen, I will question. do any team. I mean, yes. It would hurt a little bit to do a bears custom. I haven't done one yet, but I mean, I've done some Broncos stuff. Yeah. I've done some Ram stuff. I have done some lions. I saw the stuff. wolves. Wolves. You yes. would do bear stuff. I would do bears. Get the f- but there might be a hidden G somewhere. Yeah, in that's right. Oh, <laughs> that's what's up. Yes. Your Zane, I, no, you can do your Zane logo, but like with green and gold. With green and gold. Like there's there's going to be something in there. You just lost yes. all your potential bears, right? I did. So, From the people who kidding. listen to he's my kidding. podcast. <laughs> so if my dad ever becomes a Bears fan, yes. you can do his I can custom do his. shoes. But it's like the IRS before. It's theoretical. Who said I would actually do that? Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Hypothetically. Have, yes. Um, but I love how you said that you want your stuff to be used, which leads to my next question. Yes, of course. Can we here at the Cripes cast commission you to custom paint a ratchet strap? Oh, my God. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Cool. Now I why a ratchet strap? Well, I know what you're thinking, because I want it. I want to use it. Okay. And I want every time, you know, every time I ratchet some down, I want that's not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Some like that. Sure. And um, now here's the big thing, though. Ratchet straps. They're, you know, the strap itself. Probably the strap wouldn't be painted, right? Because that would be so much to paint. Yes, but I could use something to adhere to it. Okay. Like I use a, it's a DTF, a direct transfer vinyl. <laughs> use a DTF. I know. God. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. <laughs> I've never heard you be so like middle school boy. <laughs> he started talking about art and put me right in the uh, uh, thing. No, the first thing was 69. Okay, <laughs> he literally said 69 and DTF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, was it not the first thing you thought of, Colleen? No. Did, oh, I see right through that smile. I see right through that smile. You could do the small portion of the ratchet, like the part that doesn't go through the thing. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that could be exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's different things that you basically adhere with pressure and heat okay. that they morph into the fabric oh. and they're not coming anywhere. They're not going to rip. They're not yeah. going to peel off. Yeah. Um, yes, the plate parts is getting really cranked. I mean, even the actual strap's gonna break down and wear over time, so probably yeah. whatever we put there would, but there's many different ways we can jazz that shit up. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's the coolest thing we could paint? Otherwise, I'm thinking about that duck right there. <laughs> yeah. Could I mean, you that... turn that could you turn that mallard into a red breasted merganser? I mean, I could do that if you'd like. Ah, uh, we'd have to fix the top of the head though, because biologically a mallard's a little different. Yeah, because everybody RPM. knows that. Add a little putty up there and yeah. Colleen, jeez. <laughs> um, I think the Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> the Emmy? Yeah, that would be fun. I don't want to touch your Emmy. Um, uh, we have the grill in the garage. Oh, a grill? Can you do something? I can do that, a grill, yes. Would it, would it, but if I, if I actually use a grill, would it yeah. go away? I would use heat sensitive paint. Heat sensitive? All right. Yes. Good I idea. Know. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we got a big circle that oh, uh, we, we got a Packers because okay. that's when it's going to be used the most. We got Packers. You up. could just do tailgating in general. Packers, Badgers, Brewers. Oh yeah, just Wisconsin sports. Oh, Wisconsin sports one. Oh yeah, that would be cool. I'm down for that. Yeah, All or right. stuff about grilling and poking brats. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, well, we'll let the artist go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll let the <laughs> artist go. What but kind yeah, of car do you have? Can we roll it on into your car when you leave here today? We or could if you want. There's charcoal on the side. I gotta put that in the, oh, the that's garbage. Okay. We'll quick. put that in something. Yeah. All right, that's no. sweet. I yeah, love I got it, a trunk. Man. I can put it in there. Yeah. All right. For cool. Sure. I can take it apart if you want. Okay. Yeah, that'll be fun. All right. I'll that'll be that. great. Yeah, I'll just put some heat sensitive paint and. As long as it's not like a couple thousand degrees, which I hope you don't barbecue with that. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, just uh, mostly brats on that one. Oh, then you should be good to go. Yeah, good to go. Um, okay. Well, so wait, really quick question. Yes. You're wearing Jordans. Are yes. you now because of the business that you have? Are you now a sneakerhead? Yes. Or were you beforehand? I wasn't as much, but the more I started painting shoes, the more I started like realizing 
the fun different shoes that are out there and i have turned into a, a sneakeraholic yeah i mean to the extreme um do, do they care that you're painting their shoes it's a very fine line really um i've had friends that have done work around like nike products that have yeah. kind of gotten shut down for doing it okay um but because i'm i'm not really using their branding and logos i'm just using a product and then i'm almost kind of like painting, painting over painting it. it it's it's yeah it's a fine line but um as of now it hasn't run into any kind of issue yeah of well, course i'd love for for nike to reach out and just give me the green light and bless everything but that's Nike, of all course. It'd almost be uh, more interesting if they reached out to shut you down, you know? It'd be great to get that framed, yeah. Yeah, you could be like, not only are you using kids to make your shoes, you're also <laughs> not respecting local artists, you know? If they went after you for that, yes. yeah, I don't, I, that'd be bad PR for Nike. Yeah. And, it's and not what like, do they care? No. And they're you're not the buying only their shoes. Yeah, I'm buying their shoe, using it. And yeah. at the end of the day, they're not the only shoemaker out there. So no. if one doesn't work, you hop on to the next. Yeah. I mean, then it's Adidas. Exactly. Or um, New Balance. Reebok. Or... <laughs> Reebok, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> Reebok. Um, that's super cool, man. I, I think it's just awesome to see how your business um, is flourishing and continue to flourish. And um, hey, um, real quick, if there was, I wanted to ask one more thing on the mural side of the yes, world. Yes, of course. If there is one, is there a, a landmark something that you've always looked at and said, God, if I ever could paint that, you dream of painting it. Yeah. You know, you see it. Uh -huh. You're always thinking about it. Yes. Do you have anything like that? Well, I would love to paint on Lambeau Field, not across the street from Lambeau, but on Lambeau. So either on the stadium somewhere, oh. literally on the field, but somewhere in the actual Packers arena would be a dream come true. Do you, do you have grass painting experience? I do. Really? Yes. So let me ask you this. Of course. If the Packers said, hey, we're looking for a new field guy to paint the field. Oh, I'd field it up. Really? Oh, yeah. I hope... I. I really hope that because that'd be a cool day day job. Hey, that'd be fun. Who's the guy doing that right now or gal? I have no idea. You should find them. I should. And you should. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you have to do. Yep. Yep. For insurance reasons, we can't say anything more. <laughs> uh, so what's the hardest project you've ever painted and what's the most rewarding project? Sure. So the hardest was the uh, the concrete slab mural I did done in Fond du Lac because every other mural or large painting I've worked on has been, um, I guess, vertical in front of me. But a concrete slab, you're working on the ground. Oh, so yeah. it's it's working on your knees and like sketching things out in a whole different perspective. Like I actually had to use my drone to fly up to take different aerial photos of like a grid and then use those pictures to then kind of map out the design. Um, so it was a whole different way of painting than just like looking at a wall and kind of envisioning it because when you're standing on something, it's 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 an entirely different perspective, obviously, than um than a wall or tradition like that. But on the plus side, yes. less drip. Less drip. That's a very good point. Yeah. Which yes. is a bad thing if you're in fashion, but a good thing if you're a painter. That's a very good point. Oh, Almost yeah. that drip. Do you like that, Colleen? I hated that. <laughs> Colleen, I, I, I like how you're holding the mic because you're adding a lot to this podcast. <laughs> But please keep your internal thoughts outside of the pot. You're influencing the audience in a bad way. I'm just the voice of the audience. <laughs> yeah, the voice of reason. <laughs> and then which one was your most rewarding? So this past year, I have transitioned from where I painted the traditional Packers fence in Lombardi to a new fence down the street where I've turned into the community. Um, actually, it's the Bay Care Lombardi Avenue fence, which it is, is a community paint by numbers fence mm -hmm. where I set up the entire 70 foot by six foot fence as basically a large paint by numbers grid where then I have the community come out and paint the entire mural. Oh, that's um, cool. So last man. year um, there was a line of people waiting to paint and over 200 people showed up in the first hour and a half and finished it. Wow. Which I was mapping out like a seven hour day of like people slowly coming and the thing just took off like wildfire. Um, so with that, I've, I've gotten to um, partner with Baycare, who then takes all the money. Um, they, they donate an X amount per person that it shows up at the event, mm -hmm. and they give it to a local charity. So last year, it was um, 
for a local food bank. Um, this year we're focusing on more like a local cancer organization. Um, but it's, it's the most rewarding because now I get to work with community, like individuals, kids. I mean, there was three and four year olds out there. Mm -hmm. There were some grandparents, seventies and eighties out there. It was just a wide range of people that, um, they then got to see their art every time they were on Lambo and they got to see like, I painted that fence. So wow. it's not just like one artist anymore doing the street. Now it's the community coming together to kind of create something that's a uh, more large scale. So, you, man. so this like will be the second year of it. Um, this fall, which I'm really looking forward to. And there'll be a special version for the draft coming up in 25. And, um, this is cool, dude. yeah, so it's, it's now it's, I'm doing more like obviously the design work and making just a ginormous, beautiful coloring book. And, and they get to do all they get the to do hard all that. work. They you're get like, to do, yeah. Um, so do you choose the theme of the fence then? Like, so, cause you're going to be doing the paint by numbers template. Yes. Yeah. So I work with the, the homeowner directly together. We choose the theme. Cool. Um, so it's, it's his Packers party house. He actually lives around Milwaukee around here somewhere. Cool. Um, but yes, yeah, so we work together on kind of the theme since he has to live there and he has to love it too, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, together we come up with the theme and then I map it all out and kind of get it ready to go. Um, hopefully this year it'll be more complex as the design just because I want it to be more of a four, five, six hour event because so many people came by at like 11, 12 o'clock and wanted to paint the fence. Yeah. But other than refilling in a color that was already filled in, there was really nothing yeah, else for them nothing. to do, which I felt bad because right. not everyone can come at nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. I mean, there's yeah. other things. There's going yard on. work you got. There's yard do. work. There's yeah. kids sports. There's, yeah, 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 there's yeah, other yeah. things going on. So, um, oh, it's a really cool thing that you do, man. Yeah, thank you. It's, it it's fun. Very yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, I hope that you can a sign the wall and b I'll, I'll load you up with a Weber. If Beautiful. you're still down to do that. Good old Weber. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, th and thank you again for these oh, shoes. Of course. Super killer. And I can't wait to I can't wait to now wear them yes. now that I have your blessing. I'm hoping that Colleen will let you wear them someday. Waterproof. Waterproof. Yeah, that's awesome. Not resistant. <laughs> yeah, Charlie proof. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you very Appreciate much. You. Appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Well, there you have it, folks. Make sure you follow Zane on Instagram at Zane underscore stats. And check out his art, his murals, his shop, and all the projects he's working on. You can also go to zasdesigns.com if you want a custom pair of shoes. Or I'm getting my grill done custom. So if you want some custom done, check that out. And, when you say um, grill, it sounds like you're getting your grill. I know. <laughs> no, my actual Weber top is what I'm getting done. Yeah. Which is, uh, I think it'll be fun. Fun it'll to see cool. what he comes back with. Yeah. Um well, yeah, so beyond that folks, at Cripescast anywhere on social media you can follow us and thank you the Colleen, thank you for uh joining me here today. Uh folks, okay. thank you for listening. Appreciate you everybody. Keep her moving. Tell your dads we says hi and we'll see you next week. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin, the Badger say it's the old Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot in the walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done. No, you gotta keep her moving. <laughs> <laughs>